happening for the webinar itself. So just before we actually begin uh, the webinar on today, Monday the 21st of August, uh, just have a read of the webinar yourself. Just have a please read the risk warning yourself. I'll just leave that on screen there for you to read. So that concludes the actual webinar, that concludes the risk warnings for the webinar itself. Uh, now we can actually proceed with, with the actual main event of the webinar itself. Uh, so taking a look at the movements over the, uh, the past number of days, uh, what we've seen is that, I suppose the big macro story is that this week uh, marks the beginning of the 10 day military exercise the United States of America and South Korea carry out every single year. It's sort of a, a, a practical run-through of what would happen um, in, in, in the Korean Peninsula uh, should we see some aggression from North Korea. It happens every single year. If anything, it's a bit of a way for the South Koreans and the United States to kind of show off to the world what would, would take place, what would, what would happen should there be an, an attack launch from North Korea. Every single year, the North Korean regime has an angry response to this. It, 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 it's, not, it's not best pleased by, by, these, um, by this decision. And as you can expect, uh, we, we could expect another angry response this year. And bearing in mind, tensions have been running quite high uh, in that part of the world very recently. So that's been the kind of major news uh, over, the, over the weekend. Uh, what we also saw was we had some house price data from the United Kingdom. Uh, the, the right move house price data for August showed average house prices in the UK declined by 0.9%. Uh, out of China uh, tonight, uh, well today rather, we had uh, the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, injecting 50 billion won into the Chinese banking sector. And on the back of that, we have seen the push higher um, in base metals and in turn the share price of BHG Billiton, Rio Tinto, Anglo-American, Glencore, Antofagasta, all the usual big miners, of course, have benefited from the push higher in the actual upward move that we've seen in uh, the price of the underlying metals market. Uh, we have seen some, some quite strong moves, some positive moves in the, uh, in the kind of base metals market. High-grade copper, zinc and so on and so forth have done quite well uh, in, in recent weeks. Uh, so we have, we have seen some, some uh, positive upward moves in the mining companies on the back of it. Taking a look uh, at our week ahead uh, on the news and analysis section of our website, that's where it can be found. This right here is all the, the updates we do, some of the updates we do throughout the day get posted to the news and analysis section. For the week ahead uh, article, cl click on the filter by topic, scroll down, third option, weekly outlook, click on it here, weekly earnings calendar, comment, week commencing the 21st of August 2017. Uh, to be honest with you, in terms of both corporate stories, it's very, very quiet. We have a few, but not a whole, whole lot. Uh, and, and in terms of economic indicators, it's also fairly quiet. So in terms of the big economic, the big corporate stories to watch out for this week, uh, we have Hewlett-Packard Hewlett -Packard Enterprise reporting tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, we've got a couple of UK companies. We've got Carillion, Carillion uh, and we also have WPP, and then we also have uh, Lowe's from the United States. Uh, we have a number of companies reporting on Thursday, uh, but to be honest, nothing a whole lot of any major significance. Taking a look at our economic calendar, uh, which is located here on our website, on the, on the trading platform, is under the Market Pulse tab, fourth option down. What, what you'll have in the what you'll have in the in the market market calendar sector is a breakdown of all the major economic events penciled in throughout the week. Uh, it'll also give you a forecast of what's to be expected from each economic event and also the previous reading from that particular economic event. So taking a look at Tuesday, uh, we have German, we have the ZEW uh, confidence numbers coming out of Germany tomorrow morning. 
Uh, we also have the CBI industrial trends from the United Kingdom. Uh, turning our attention to Wednesday, we have the PMI figures from Germany. Uh, we also have the PMI figures from, from France. And we also have the, the Eurozone as a whole. Uh, we also have consumer confidence from the United States. And as we do every single Wednesday, we have the we have the all imagery figures, the energy information agency numbers come out every single Wednesday at half past three. Turning our attention to Thursday, uh, we have GDP, uh, GDP, G revised GDP numbers from the UK at half nine. Uh, and then all, as, as we do every single Thursday, we have initial jobless claims every Thursday at half one. Uh, at three o'clock on Thursday from the United States, we have existing home sales and on Friday, we have the uh, German uh, GDP numbers coming out at 7 a.m. We also have, earlier than that, we have uh, inflation figures coming out of Japan. We have, more, we, have, we have the German IFO business numbers coming out at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we have some durable goods numbers coming out of the United States. Also, bearing in mind, the biggest kind of macroeconomic event of the week is going to be the Jackson Hole Symposium, which kicked with last. Which, which last uh, for, for uh, three days and kicks off on Thursday just coming. Uh, it's, it's, it's been out in the news for the, for over a week now, for about a week now. That unfortunately, Mario Draghi is not going to be discussing. Um, it was suggested by a couple of underscore sources from the European Central Bank that Mr. Draghi will not in fact be discussing European um, Central Bank monetary policy. For quite a while, uh, the, we, had, we had traders speculating that Mario Draghi was going to begin, was going to lay the foundations for talk about tapering the Eurozones, the ECB's uh, uh, 60 billion euros per month bond buying scheme. Because bearing in mind, it was Jackson Hole three years ago when he first hinted and kind of laid the foundations for the European Central Bank going down the route of a very aggressive monetary easing policy. Uh, so it looks like that, 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 that appears to be off the table. We have seen some negative implications for the single currency on the back of that, which we'll discuss now in a moment, but that is by far the biggest economic indicator, uh, the biggest uh, macroeconomic story of the week. Uh, let's take a look at some of the big markets. And as always, the usual rundown, I'll cover some of the major indices, the major commodities, the major currency pairs. Uh, that will be, that'll be the bulk of the actual webinar itself. If you do have any markets you want me to cover, which I, which I haven't covered, just feel free to stick it in the comment section or the chat section and I'll be sure to include it. And taking a look now at the FTSE 100, the UK 100, uh, it's been in very much sideways trading uh, for the last number of months, um, but we're now up against a very important level here. We're currently trading at 73.25 and this price here at 72.95 has been a big area of support, it's been key support for the last number of months, we tried to break in through it on a few occasions. We haven't quite got there yet. But with the exclusion of this large upward move here in August, it has been by and large been, been pushing lower. And it, we all seem to be kind of pushing back down towards the bias seems to be towards the negative side. Uh, so this is going to be a big level to watch out for. Should we break south of 72.95, the next big level to watch out below that is going to be the 200 moving average at 72.60. And then below that, it'll be 7,200. Any moves higher in the FTSE 100, uh, we're going to encounter resistance at the 50-day moving average of 74.16. And then beyond that, 74.81. If we, while we remain below 74.81, I think, I think we could see a, continue to see a negative outlook for the FTSE 100. Uh, over in continental Europe, things aren't, aren't looking as rosy. The German market, the, the DAX, has been in decline since June, and we're still very much in, in the downward trend that we've been in. It's a fairly clear and concise downward trend we're seeing here. A downward trend is defined, defined as lower lows and lower highs. The creation of the first lower low, the lower high, move to a lower low, lower high, another lower low, and then it, it failed to take out the previous high, so you could, you could argue that this is another lower high for the DAX at Germany 30. It's in a very clear downward trend. While we, we remain south of 12,343, uh, the August high, the outlook is going to it, we, we, the outlook is going to remain bearish for the Germany 30. Uh, the level to watch out for the downside is going to be the 200 moving average 
at 11,970. Uh, as you can see, it's previously acted as support here, so it's going to be a big, a big level to watch out for to the downside because it has already acted as, as support. Should we move south of it, uh, with them bears, bears and sellers, we'll be looking towards 11,800 and 11,692. But if you do see a break north of the resistance at 12,343, we'll then be looking towards the 100 day moving average. Uh, at 12,456. Bearing in mind, it acted as support on, on, on the way down. Once it made, it made a decisive break through it, it didn't get anywhere near back up to it. Even though the United States uh, indices were looking much better compared to the European counterparts for several weeks, we have seen quite an aggressive sell-off uh, in both the S P uh, and both the, the Dow Jones and the S P recently. So it, it could be a, it could be a sign that the, the, the uh, the decline in equities isn't just confined to Europe; it's also um, it's also spreading to the United States. So, speaking of classic downward trends, creation of a lower low, lower high, and then creation of a new lower low. This the aggressive sell-off and uh, uh, decline in price is also mimicked by the decline, the aggressive decline in negative momentum. So while we can see the price moving lower and the, and the negative momentum picking up pace, we can be more confident that, the, that, that this move is here to, say, here to stay. Should, should we see prices lower and negative momentum is declining versus positive, that would be a sign that there's a divergence. And, and, and with that, we could see potential price turnaround. But as we're pushing lower, keeping in mind, uh, we haven't we've kind of stopped short of the resist of the support rather at the 50-day moving average of 21,633. A break below that will then look to bring us back towards 21,400, and then south of that, uh, sellers will be looking towards the 100 day moving average at 21,664. While we remain south of this price here at uh, just north of 22,000, the outlook is going to remain negative for the Dow Jones. It is worth pointing out in the grand scheme of things, the market's been in a very uh, positive trend. So, so as we move lower, we could actually see fresh buying come into, come into play. But the kind of more near-term trend is to the uh, is to the downside. Uh, it's a similar picture, uh, if not if not actually slightly bleaker for the S and P 500. Similar situation whereby a, a new lower low is created, a lower high, and a new lower low. Uh, we're trading well below the 50-day moving average on the S&P 500, and it's actually the 100-day moving average in around the region of 4,000, sorry, 2,420 that is actually providing that is actually uh, providing the support. So that's going to be the key support to watch out for. Um, the, the the price action is heading south. The creation of a lower low. A lower high and uh, another lower low points to the downside we're seeing negative momentum is actually increasing uh, so should we take out the 100 day moving average at 2420 we're then looking towards 2405 and then back down towards 2380 we would need to take off this level here go north of 2470 before we can become more confident that this is just a kind of a, a kind of a, a, a minor pullback in the grand scheme of things. Taking a look now uh, uh, in the opposite on the opposite side of things, uh, taking a look at the commodities market, uh, gold I said a, it's still trading lower on, uh, in comparison to last week's moves, uh, but it's still uh, very much in its upward trend. The gold market. Uh, hit a new 2017 high on Friday, traded up to just north of $1,300 per ounce, but then it quickly sold off after that, so that, that is slightly, slightly to be something to be uh, worried about. Creation of a uh, of, of a, the highest level we've seen since November 2016, and then it quickly sold off afterwards. So it is also worth pointing out that slight, a slight cause for concern that positive momentum is, is still clutching on, but he hasn't really gained a whole lot. And when you see prices move higher and momentum doesn't really correspond with it, uh, it could be a sign that the, the move higher may not last. But nonetheless, the price is the element to watch out for. Uh, while we, we remain north of the support at 1280 for gold, the outlook is still going to be positive for gold. 
if you break below, it's a different story. That could that, that, that could be a bit of a game changer. But while we, we remain above 1280, the outlook is going to be positive, and traders will be looking towards 1300 and 1308 as the levels to watch out for. Should you move south of 1208, the region in this kind of 1170, 1165, that's going to be the next support level to keep an eye on. If we then move south of that, then we can become uh, then then we become wary that we could be heading. This could be the beginning of a downward move, and then we'll be looking back towards the 50-day moving average at 12.52. Continuing with the commodities theme, uh, turning our attention now to the energy market. Uh, we're now looking at Brent crude oil. Brent crude oil obviously had a jolt higher uh, on Friday, but we seem to kind of can't really kind of get beyond Friday's high today. What I mentioned about positive, what, what I was mentioning about momentum yesterday, or only, sorry, only 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 five only two minutes ago, while the price of oil was declining here, we saw an increase, a pickup in negative momentum and now we're seeing a decline in negative momentum and the price the price is noticed to be is noticed to be higher uh, in the last few days compared with say tuesday and wednesday of last week so we could be looking to kind of retest uh, the august high of 5383 and should we do that uh then traders would then be looking towards the may high of 5457 and then beyond that that the uh, the, the next level to watch out for Will be 56 and 53, which of course is the April high. So there's the level to keep out for to the upside on Brent crude oil. Should it move south, uh, we, we could find support uh, as we did, well, we traded a couple of times below the support at the 50 day moving average. Uh, so we could find support in around the 50 dollars at 55 cents down to around 50 dollars itself. But should we move south at 50 bucks? That will, will be a bit of a concern that this is the, that is, the, is the beginning of a move lower. And then traders, we're looking back towards the $48.92 mark. It's a similar move uh, that we witnessed uh, on WTI. As you can see here, pushed higher on Friday, giving back a small bit of ground since then. But as you can see, negative momentum is dwindling nicely. So this could be, uh, this move could here could, could well just be a correction in the wider move to the upside, and we've given back some ground, held support at the 50-day moving average, and this could be the market going kind to of picking up momentum again and having another test at the July high of $50.27, and then should we break beyond $50.27, we're then looking towards $51.66. From the May high, and then of course the April high is fifty-three dollars and fifty-six cents. If we break, if we take off this level here, the fifty-day moving average at fifty forty-six dollars and thirty-eight cents, the previous the which has been the low and the support in August, then we could be looking towards it moves further further south, uh, back towards forty-four dollars and ninety-three cents, and then down to forty-three dollars and fifty cents. Like I said, any um, any markets you want me to want me to cover, uh, feel free to stick them in stick them in the chat box, and we'll get around to talking to that before the webinar is out. Uh, turning our attention now to the euro versus the US dollar, uh, it's obviously had a great run throughout 2017, uh, but basically from August onwards, from early August onwards, uh, we have seen the uh, the currency pair hand back some of its uh, gains. For a couple of reasons, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar, the we had a couple of uh, unnamed sources from the European Central Bank stating that Mr. Draghi would not be uh, talking about tapering the European Central Bank's uh, 60 billion euros per month bond buying scheme. So a lot of the move we, we saw here, especially uh, from June onwards, has been was was, a, was a, a lot of money was poured into the single currency in anticipation of Mr. Draghi laying the foundations of the groundwork for a potential shift in ECB policy. Now that we haven't seen that, we are seeing some pushes. We are seeing some, some ground being given up on the euro versus the US dollar. Um, not to say that this is going to be a complete turnaround, but 
seeing as negative momentum it had grew all along here as the price was declining and we still haven't really gotten we haven't seen any kind of major tapering off or decline in the negative momentum uh, with, so we could be looking at a negative move or setting pressure on the single currency against the greenback for for uh, at least at least for for another while just yet. We would want to take out this level here at 118.47 um, before we can actually before we actually get uh, regain confidence in the euro versus the US dollar. If we take out that level, then we can be more confident that. We're, we're that, that, that the decline we saw was just a sell-off or some profit taking or a pullback uh, in relation to the kind of wider positive upward move. And should we take out uh, 1847, we we'll then be looking towards the, the August high of 119.10, and then of course beyond that, the big psychological 120 level. But if we move, continue to move south, uh, should we take out this price here, the, uh, the low from Thursday at 116.62, then traders will be looking towards back towards 116.13 and then below that the 100 day sorry apologize the 50 day moving average would they, would, they, would then be put on the radar and that kind of coincides with the support at 114.79 so the 50 day moving average is in at 115.18 and then and then the, the support from the from the upward move in july at 114.18 so that would be the region to keep an eye on should we take out 116.30 on the euro dollar. Turning attention now to the pound versus the US dollar. So this was coming up as uh, over two weeks ago. This this uh, red candle here there'll be the sell off on the the Thursday the third of August. Uh, we had a quite a, with a dovish update from the Bank of England. And it sent the pound lower versus the US dollar, and it hasn't really kind of gained any ground since. As you can see here, while the market was falling off, we did see a, a increase, a stepping up of negative momentum, uh, to, uh, was, was increasing all the way along. We've seen a slight uh, decline in the rate of negative momentum, and that's kind of matched by a kind of failure to, to really kind of make, make a concisive and, and a divisive, a kind of concisive. Uh, move below the 100 day moving average so this could be a sign here that, that, uh, that the pound is, is encouraging is, in, is encountering buyers in around the 100 day moving average against the US dollar which is it which that which that that price is in around the 128.74 region uh, so should we can should we hang remain north of the 100 day moving average the next level to watch out for um, to the upside will be 129.38 and then of course the 130 level itself and then beyond that 130.59 and then towards 131.64 this price up here what you, you would like to see to be more confident if you're buying into a market which has, which has declined you would like to see a tapering off or declining in negative momentum uh, because as you can see here so that doesn't always kind of guarantee it but if you look at this, at this this price action here, as we push to lower lows, before we had the upturn here in late June, we saw negative momentum decline, then the, the positive, then momentum turned positive. So you would like to see that replicated on the momentum indicator. Should we make should we move decisively lower below the 100 day moving average at 128.80, we'll then be looking back towards 128, the figure itself. Uh, and then south of that, we've been looking towards 127.16. And then, of course, the big one to watch out for will be the Trinity moving average at 126.45. The euro sterling has had a great run, and it's, it's pretty much knocking on, on the uh, resistance uh, just created only uh, on on Friday. We're currently trading at 91.28 on the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. The high just created on, on for the year, um, a 2017 high, uh, multi-year high for the euro versus the British pound uh, is at one, sorry, not at 91.49. That's going to be there with the watch out for to the upside. Uh, we've been in a very strong and kind of solid upward trend for the for the euro versus the the, uh, the British pound, the trend is your friend until it comes to an end, uh, as that old uh, mar market saying goes. 
Uh, but should we see uh, any pullbacks in the euro versus the British pound, we could see some, some buying enter, en, entrance a fold uh, in around this region here at 90.88. And then south of that, this price here at 90.52. So it's in a fairly clear, clear and concise upper trend. So we should, uh, so uh, the next level to watch out for to the upside will be 93 on euro sterling. It is slightly worrying though that we are seeing a bit of a tapering off in positive momentum. Uh, when markets, when the price is creating new multi-month highs or multi-year highs, and the, and the momentum, the rate at which the market is moving upwards is declining, it could be a bit of a sign that we could see some a, a change or a turnaround in the price. We could have a scenario whereby the momentum that the buyers have is running out of steam, and we could see a bit of a pullback. Uh, and should we see a pullback, as I mentioned, 1988, and then down towards 90.54 will be the levels to watch out for. And then, of course, 90 itself. Turning our attention now to the uh, dollar yen, the American dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, this has been aggressively losing ground since July. It's very much uh, po pointing south. Only uh, on Friday, uh, the low that was created on Friday took out the low of June. Uh, as you can see here in the last few sessions we have seen negative momentum ever so slightly creep higher so it's very much to the downside what we're looking at on the dollar yen that the feb the the low here created on friday just gone at 108.63 that's the level that the next level to watch out for to the downside and then should we take out that traders will then be looking towards the april low of 108.13 any rallies we do encounter in the dollar yen could encounter resistance at 110, 110.37 and 110.62. We really would need to take out sort of one, say around 111 or maybe even up as where the 100 and the 50 day moving average are at 111.22 and 38 respectively before we can actually become more confident uh, in, a up, in a positive or upward move. I take a look now at the dollar index. And then I'll do, I'll do a recap of the DAX, and then we'll come. Then we we'll bring the uh, the webinar itself to an end. So taking a look here, and the kind of lot longer time frame from late May up until now, it's been a very kind of clear and kind of concise downward trend, creation of a of a lower low, lower high, and then all the way down here, very kind of clear and concise downward trend in the uh, dollar index but we have seen some positive moves uh, since uh, over the last maybe three weeks or so uh, going on three weeks at the low here created uh, on the second on the second uh, of August so coming up now on a few weeks the market has been has been pushing lower if we do if we do continue to see a push higher in the dot in the dollar index the next level to watch out for is going to be this price here at 94.27 and then beyond that 95 itself uh, for the dollar index it's been in such a kind of a large uh, we have seen such a large sell-off in the US dollar um, a, a bounce back is, is, is hardly surprising it would only be kind of a move north of 95 could you then become more confident that that they that you can become more confident that it's actually a correction of the move that we witnessed, uh, the sell-off we witnessed from late May. If we if we kind of fail to take out 95, it could be just a a bounce back, uh, an interim bounce back in the dollar index before the we go on to have the next move move lower. And should we move south, uh, in the dollar index, the levels we watch out for to the downside. Uh, will be this price here is the first one, first one to keep an eye on to the downside at 92.83 and then below that we've been looking for the recent low of 92.4 right i'll just now recap um on the germany 30 the the dax uh, and then we will bring the as i'll show you a couple of things on our website and then we'll bring the actual webinar itself to an end so Looking at the Germany 30 here, it rallied all the way through to 2017, created uh, a new all-time high here in June, but ever since then, it's been pushing lower, and the 
from textbook definition of a downward trend is a creation of lower lows and lower highs. So the market creates an all-time high here, takes out the recent low and the support in, in around this level here quite decisively as well, quite a large sell-off here, a, 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 a steep red candle we're seeing here. Trades through, through that, creates a lower low, pushes higher here, gets curtailed, runs out of steam at the 50-day moving average, which previous support becomes resistance, can take off the 50-day moving average, and it creates a lower high. Then after that, turns turns lower again, taking off the most recent low, going on to create another new low here. The market pushes higher, but yet again, can seem to actually turn around and resume the upward trend that it previously was in for, for so many months. Runs out of steam, turns over on itself yet again. So we create another lower high here, and then the market creates another lower low here. Obviously, the 200 moving average is a big is a is a big level to watch out for. It's sort of price action whereby whereby traders are now wondering the move we saw here up up to um well let's let's call that 12,900 and then the pullback here of uh, of about a thousand points. People are going to be wondering is this move lower of a thousand points just uh, a market handing back some of the profit, curtail, um, um, pull back, pull, pull back or hand back some of the profit. That is May because it's been in, in a very obvious and powerful upward trend. And then are we going to actually move higher from here? Or are we at a point whereby the market's going to turn over on itself yet again, trade through the 200 day moving average and continue in the downward trend that has been in since June? We haven't seen any evidence that the market is going to get a push higher uh, as of yet. While we remain south of this price here, 12,343, uh, the, the, lower, the, the lower high from August, the outlook is going to remain negative. But we, we, we would be more confident of a, of, a, of a continuation of the downward pressure that we've seen should we take out the 200 moving average and the 200 moving average comes into play at just shy of 11,970. So if we move below the 200 moving average, then we can become more confident of a continued sell off in the DAX. So levels to watch out for to the downside 11,969, the 200 moving average, and then south of that, we're looking towards 11,800, and then below that, we'll be looking towards the old support from February at 11,692. If you do take out the uh, the resistance at 12,343, we'll then be looking towards uh, the 50, the 100 day moving average at 12,456. And then beyond that, we'll be looking back up towards 12,000, we'll be looking towards 12,576. And then beyond that, 12,678. It's one of those things in, um, as a market, when a market's moving in a certain direction, the lower it, the, the lower it, the market goes, the more confident you can be you can be of a continuation of a lower move, and the more high, the higher it goes, uh, the more highs it takes out, and the more new highs it creates, the higher it goes, that, that the more confident you can be of the of that market continuing on in that direction. It is up to you. When do you want to get involved? Do you want to see if we break below the 20 moving average, or do you want to take to potentially take a short position? In the expectation, it's going to take off the 20 moving average, or do you want to wait and, and see until it breaks breaks through this resistance here at 12,343, or do you want to go ahead and buy in advance of it? So it's entirely up to you. Um, just before we go, um, today is Monday, the 21st of August, uh, because this day next week is a bank holiday, there will be no webinar next week, uh, next Monday, but there are other webinars to keep an eye out, eye, eye out for. So this week on Wednesday the 23rd uh, at 19.30 BST, British Summertime, we have a webinar covering the uh, Global Market Report. Uh, also on Wednesday, we ha on, on, on the, the, uh, the following Wednesday, on Wednesday the 30th of August, we have a, at, at 19.30 British Summertime, we have the Introduction to Binaries webinar. And on Friday, the 1st of September, uh, at 13.15 for the summertime, we will have the non-farm payrolls webinar uh, uh, live uh, uh, covered by 
um, uh, by analysts here in London and also over in Toronto as well. And then Monday the 4th of September, we will resume with the weekly Monday market update with myself, David Madden, um, at the future time of 12.15. As always, I mention every single week, just keep an eye on Market Insight, which can be found under the Market Pulse. This is the insight here. Some of our updates get put up there uh, from, from around the globe. Same with Chart Forum. Chart Forum is the third option down on the Market Pulse tab. Uh, it's essentially, it's, it's um, we, we write a few hundred characters uh, about a particular chart that we find interesting. And a lot of the stuff that we cover in our webinars will also be, um, will be also replicated what you see in our, um, our, our commentary and analysis from the actual chart forum itself. So I do thank you for your patience. Uh, I've been Dave Madden, Market Analyst from CMC Markets. Thank you for your patience. Have a good trading week and, have, and good luck.